Welcome to a very, very, very special live episode of Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Thursday, March 14th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Akron game in 170 days, the game against Michigan in 261 days, and today's show is all about which sideline one man might be standing on for that game against Michigan in 261 days. A report out of Football Scoop saying that Ohio State running backs coach Tony Alford could be on his way to join the Michigan Wolverines to replace Mike Hart as their running backs coach. I'm joined right now by Tony Gerderman of BuckeyeHuddle.com. Tony, I guess let's start with, this is not a done deal. The football scoop report just says, you know, if they can agree to terms, all that kind of stuff. But to me, as soon as this report comes out, Tony Alford kind of becomes a man without a country until he has a new job with Michigan. I, I can't fathom having this report come out and then Tony Alford... Uh, you know, pulling George Costanza and walking back into the Woody Hayes tomorrow if they can't reach a deal with Michigan. Like, oh, oh, um, you, oh, you thought I was serious? Oh, no, 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 please. Yeah, you know, coaches will use their agents all the time to uh, maybe get an extension or get a bump in terms of, you know, using leverage, uh, another school as leverage. Using Michigan as leverage against Ohio State is doesn't feel like leverage to me. That just feel, feels like somebody ready for a change. But like you said, it's not it's not done yet as far as we know right now. But, boy, um, there, there's a, a bunch of things that go into this. Obviously, the timing is odd. The move from between Ohio State and Michigan, if it happens, is not unprecedented. Um, but these are kind of unprecedented times with, with what's going on at Michigan. So it would be – and Ohio State, frankly. So it's it's it would definitely be a surprise. It's not a surprise – it wouldn't be a surprise if Tony Alford left for somewhere. It wouldn't have been a surprise, but Michigan isn't somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Wait, are you saying Michigan's nobody? Because that someone has said that before, and it didn't work out great for them. Uh, just, just kidding, everyone. Just kidding. Uh, you know the football scoop report. I'm just going to read it. You know how people love when I read the, read stuff on this show, Tony. Uh, Tony Alford is the quote the is the target to join his current employer's biggest rival. Football scoop has learned a deal could be reached as early as today if the parties come to an agreement. Sources shared. They go on to talk about the fact that vacancy stems from the re recent exit of Mike Hart, a former Michigan star tailback who was not welcomed back to the program as more transitioned to his role at the helm. You know, this is, you know, the, the, the Mike Hart thing, you know, broadly speaking, a lot of the reports from the Michigan side around the Mike Hart thing centered around the fact that Mike Hart was not, you know, was not really seriously considered for the head coaching job. He thought he probably should have, was not really seriously considered for the offensive coordinator position. He thought he should have. And that was sort of the the general trend behind the exit. You know, I, I think people may look at the Tony Alford side of this and go, you know, I, you don't have to look that hard at the Ohio State roster for 2025 or 2024, the Michigan roster for 2024 and say, why on earth would you leave Ohio State for Michigan when Ohio State is broadly considered one of, if not the favorites for the national championship? And Michigan seems like they may be poised for a little bit of a step back after their own national championship season last year. Tony, what the heck? Uh, well, how many position coaches stay at the same school for 10 years? And that's that this is this would be Tony Alford's 10th year. And it's a rarity. And so at some point, if you want to, you know, it's the thing where you've got to, if, if you want to take that next step, you have to take a different step. And if you want to go be a coordinator, because um, right now at, at Ohio State, he he might be in terms of the 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 designated survivor of coordinators. You know, he might he's he's certainly behind Chip Kelly. Brian Harline is the co-offensive coordinator. Justin Fry has had offensive coordinator experience at this point, so maybe this is a an opportunity to move and then just begin um not begin but continue on your quest for something more than just being a running backs coach and there's nothing wrong with being a running back running backs coach because from all accounts talking to all of the running backs we have over the years they all love tony alford and and still love him and consider him a father figure and he he talks the way he interacts with his players is is the way a father interacts with a son uh, you know he, he's playful he can be strict he can um you know have some digs at them, playful digs, and they all get along and they'll they'll do it to each other. There's a bunch of give and take there. But 10 years at one place, the same position, and, you know, he's had his assistant uh, head coaching or associate head coach of the offense, you know, those kinds of additional 
um, titles, but I, I think at some sometime at some point you come to a realization or you come to a place where you need something more, you need something different if you want something more. And you know he, he's got high school kids in the air. I believe his his, high, his oldest son maybe or youngest son maybe maybe graduating this year. So like there is um, you know it, it might be that time. Yeah, his his uh, I know one of his kids is, I think, looking at Butler or committed to Butler or signed with Butler, uh, who is a high school football player as well. So, yeah, if you want when you get to the point where your kids are out of high school, that may be the time you make a move. There was also some, you know, there was a lot of scuttlebutt around, you know, coaching changes and who's going to stay and who's going to go over the course of the weeks after the uh, Cotton Bowl loss to Missouri and Ohio State ended up turning over a couple of spots on their coaching staff. and turning over one of them more than once. But, you know, Tony Alford's name was one that you sort of heard as like, you know, they're kind of looking at him. They were, you know, Brian Hartline was coming back. Tim Walton was coming back. Perry, Perry Eliano and Corey Dennis and uh, uh, special Parker teams Fleming. guy, Parker Fleming. There we go. Parker Fleming uh, all ended up, all ended up leaving. Tony Alford sounded like, you know, if you were going to put him into the camp of absolutely safe or like at least, you know, having a conversation, he was in the at least having a conversation side of things. And I think some of that stemmed from the recruiting at the running back room. They have they have missed on a couple of guys and they've had a couple of late flips the last couple of years. And I think that's, you know, that's at least part of that conversation. And ultimately they ended up keeping him. But, you know, if you if it's if you're at least having that conversation, then you know, sometimes we have seen coaches just go somewhere else to go get a fresh start. This this may also be a little bit of a like, hey, maybe just go get a fresh start and a new contract. Yeah, and, and if if Ryan Day wasn't entirely sure or was even thinking, is it time to make a move? Th there's some writing on the wall there, maybe maybe for both sides. And, and when you look at uh, Tony Alford's time, I believe he has coached four running backs in his time at Ohio State that have been drafted in the NFL. Two of them were signed before he got here. One was Trey Sermon, and the other is J.K. Dobbins. So, like, in his nine years, and you've got to backdate this, so like, in his first six years, he the only running back he's recruited that has been drafted is J.K. Dobbins. Now, next year that's going to change with Travion Henderson, but the the, the amount of draft picks that he's, he's recruited, you mentioned the recruiting being an issue in – some aspects you would kind of expect more, but like I said, the number will be larger next year. And getting Quinshawn Judkins out of the portal, that's a pretty good get. Getting Trey, Trey Sermon out of the portal is a very good get uh, eventually. That was a crazy season, though, in 2020. But uh, the re recruiting aspect of it, I think, uh, could, uh, could be better. And that has been an issue over the years. And also, not that it's his fault, but getting keeping guys healthy but also having a third guy that can come in because they have not had that depth and depth is harder to come by nowadays with the portal but even before the portal you know at, at what when maybe it was 2016 when they just had like mike weber and jk dobbins and a little bit of antonio williams i think and that's you know even in 2014 2015 they didn't quite have the depth mike weber was hurt in 2015 but um, overall, the depth has has fluctuated, and that goes back to the running backs coach and and not having enough guys ready. But um, yeah, I, I don't want to put too much on him uh, due to the injuries. You know, that's just some guys just can't uh, stay healthy, and sometimes you have some bad turf, bad luck, whatever. But yeah, strange days indeed. Sue says a lot of our fans are saying they should fire Alfred for even taking this interview, FYI. And that, and, and I said that kind of off the top of the show. It feels like at some, you know, there, there are certain, you know, if you're if you're looking and it's like, hey, I might go take the running backs coach job at Alabama or I might go take the running backs coach job at, you know, even another conference school. Hey, I might go to USC like that. That I think is one thing. I think there is a certain you know, crossing the Rubicon thing here. If you're familiar with either that phrase or that old historical story, you know, if you, if what, at some point that the, if you were thinking about taking a job at Michigan and you're an Ohio state person or vice versa, that is probably a crossing the Rubicon thing in a way that even another big 10 school or another national power might not be. As soon as this story came out, it was kind of like, okay, so this is, even if it's not a done deal, 
it feels like you you have uh, probably your, your key card might not work your thumbprint might not work on the uh, doors at the woody hayes anymore as soon as this story comes out we'll we'll see whether you know we'll see where this goes it's not official yet mm -hmm. uh mike farino says he should probably be fired for even talking to michigan this late spring practice has already started simply unacceptable imo and you know tony we just saw this the head coach at georgia state just left his program to go take the running backs coach role at South Carolina. And, you know, he's in a, that was, that was another case where the guy had been there for a few years. It was kind of like, eh, it wasn't really working. And, you know, that, that running backs coach position at South Carolina had been open for a while. So, you know, it, it's a little crappy to leave your team in the middle of your, in the middle of spring practice. But, you know, I guess, I guess the question is that Mike Hart will not be back thing only, ca only came out like a week ago. Was that last week? Maybe. So some of the timing may be on Michigan's end. And, you know, if if this was if this conversation was happening on January 13th instead of March 13th, you know, yeah, that that makes a difference. But this is kind of the, the calendar is just sort of getting stretched and pushed in ways that it has not in the past. Yeah. And you go back to Urban Meyer's first staff with Bill Sheridan as a cornerbacks coach, and he left for the NFL, for the NFL and like. February and it was like whoa or it was like right before spring spring practice and it's like this is unheard of but I don't recall ever covering a team where a coach leaves in spring ball we've seen it uh we've seen it in August but I've never uh never experienced it in the middle of camp now they are on spring break right now but the timing is on but yeah it the the way this whole thing fluctuates with all of the dominoes of coaching and this is a separate domino at Michigan with Jim Harbaugh taking his time and then uh, the whole Sharon Moore thing and figuring out what he wants to do there. And it, it things move at their own pace and these things can move slowly, but it is, um, it's really, really surprising that you would come to this point and would be like, you know what, let's, let's talk, let's take a look, let's think about this. Because I think if, uh, if you wanted to leave, you, you could have left like Tony Alfred could have left after the season. To think that this is the offer that he was waiting for, I think, is another another off-putting things for fans and certainly for perhaps Ryan Day as well. And yeah, like I, if he stays, and the next time we talk to him, obviously it's like, hey, what's going on with the Michigan thing? And it, it will become like this Greg Schiano Tennessee thing, where yeah, now's not the time to talk about Tennessee. It's like now's not the time to talk about Michigan. And I don't think it can just be let go. Uh, there needs to be some crystal clear clarification on this, uh, not just obviously for the media, but uh, for Ryan Day as well. Uh, now the super chat for Mike Farino hasn't Hart not been seen with the team since the national championship game might not have been public, but it certainly seemed that he was out. You know, this is something that I think I had at least heard some rumblings about that. I'm guessing you have heard some rumblings about that. I'm guessing Kevin Noon, who joins us now, may have heard some rumblings about that. That, you know, the Mike Hart departure was not, it did not come just out of thin air, Kevin. I mean, th this is something that had sort of been reported for a while, but it also didn't get announced publicly until last week. And sometimes that's, you know, you're sort of work figuring out if you can bring the person back. Sometimes that's giving them an opportunity to sort of have a fig leaf of, oh, you know, the old Ed Warren or, yeah, I, I'm voluntarily leaving the offensive coordinator position at Ohio State for the offensive line coach position at Minnesota. Right. There's there's a lot to it. And certainly anybody who was following the situation, it just did not sound like Mike Hart was going to be part of the plans moving forward. How, how far are we removed from where, where Mike Hart was supposed to be the next Michigan head coach? I mean, and Sharon Moore comes in and has his success. And as I just said on a, on, a, on an episode of Big Me Kickoff that I just put up there, uh, you know, you you have this success, but remember, we nobody knows what Sharon Moore is going to be. He was he was the on field coach. Jim Harbaugh was there the remainder of the week, putting all the game plans together and everything else. It just uh, you know with the, with Mike Hart, it just seemed that that burn that they burned that bridge a little bit, and I think it was just best for all right. Let's all let's all calm down. Let's all think this through a little bit. Nope, we still hate each other. All right, let's let's, let's get on with it. <laughs> All right. And now it is uh, as official as it gets without actually being official. We, we had felt like as soon as the first report came out, like, okay, that's not something gets floated with, without it being basically done. 
Pete Thamel of ESPN now reporting sources. Ohio State running back coach Tony Alford is expected to be the next running backs coach at Michigan. He's informed OSU officials that he's leaving. Football Scoop first reported him as a target. So there you go. It's not official, but it's pretty darn official. So, uh, you know, this is here's a question from Sue that's interesting. Could this move be related to Alfred feeling like he's losing control of the run game with Chip Kelly coming in spitballing here? I mean, that's it's interesting. I don't get the sense, Tony, that that's probably the primary driving factor here. But, you know, if you are the running backs coach and you had a certain say in the run game and now you're bringing in a guy who's known and, you know, respected by Ryan Day for his impact on the running game in particular, it seems like you are probably going to lose a little bit of your impact there. Yeah, I mentioned earlier the writing on the wall. Chip Kelly may have came in and highlighted that writing as well. And um, yeah, with with more guys coming in, having more say, and Tony Alford perhaps losing some of that say, um, yeah, I, I think that I think those things may be pretty related because we were also told as w- that uh, Bill O'Brien and Chip Kelly were both going to be able to take a look at the offensive staff and see what they thought of it. And if they wanted to make change, you are the offensive coordinator. So we will have this conversation and not that Ohio state is getting rid of Tony Alford, but Alfred may have seen that this might be his last year at Ohio state because last year was almost his last year at Ohio state. So I think, like we said earlier, it kind of just resets his clock. Um, maybe gets him a co-offensive coordinator bump at Michigan. I think right now they just, they're their quarterbacks coach. Uh, Kirk Campbell is their offensive coordinator. I don't see anybody else in terms of uh, a co-OC there because they've got a relatively young uh, staff uh, in terms of the the offensive line and, and running uh, not running backs anymore with my cart, but uh, receivers. So that may also be an opportunity for him to get a coordinator job. But the the lateness of it is really um, just out. And I wonder, uh, God, and this couldn't have been easy to tell the players. Um, and it's, as I said, the players are very, very close with him, and and this is a, this is going to be tough for them to take the players themselves. I, on one hand, they're going to be sad to lose him, but on the other hand, are they angry that he's that that this is the place they're losing him to? So maybe that makes it easier to take the fact that he's going to the enemy. Well, and you got to remember, this is spring break week for Ohio State, so none of the players are there. So this is not a conversation that's going to happen in person. That this is probably a text or a phone call or something like that, which, you know, time being what timing is, you know, a lot of coaches talk about the fact that they really wanted Chip Kelly, for example, really wanted to talk to his players face to face. He left UCLA and explained the why. Do the timing or what Tony Alford wants. This is not it's something he can probably do face to face because those guys are probably out doing the stuff that you do on spring break when you were a college kid and sitting around the Woody Hayes, most likely, at least most of them. So, you know, you won't have that. Uh, as, as far as, you know, what happens next? And uh, it feels like it was sort of a race between the two of you guys to throw something in the group text uh, as soon as this happened, and you both throw out the same name. Tony threw it out first, so I'm going to start with him. Tony Odysseus says, bring home Eddie George as running backs coach. Uh, I would I would love to see that for uh, for him, for Ohio State. Although Penn State, I believe, is offering him a job as the linebackers coach. <laughs> trying to get a spit take there, Tom. <laughs> that's that's uh that's a that's a pretty good deep cut there. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. um, Joe Paterno wanted Eddie George as a linebacker, uh, just just an FYI. But you know he is, I believe, fifteen and eighteen at Tennessee State in three years, uh, and, and so that that then becomes an issue. Does he want to reset his clock? And you know you're going to make the call. You may have already made the call. Frankly, I mean, this could have been done a while ago in terms of just feelers. Um, that's one name. They're going to be plenty. I saw somebody on our board or maybe on Twitter just saying, like, what are we going to do now? It's like, well, Ohio State just lost a position coach to Michigan. Ohio State can go take somebody else's position coach. It's March. It doesn't matter. Time the calendar no longer matters anymore to anybody. You just go grab somebody because, as we always say, whenever there's a job opening at Ohio State, the applications are going to come flying in. Yeah, the applications are going to be every everyone in the country outside of a few select places uh, are going to be, you know, you're probably lining up to take the Ohio State running backs coach job because it is a relatively easy place to recruit. It, you, you're working with a ton of talent on a very talented offense and are headed into a season where you're one of the favorites for a national championship. 
The pay is generally pretty good. You know, Eddie George moving from the head coaching job, hypothetically, at Tennessee State, I think I saw he makes $468,000 a year there. Even the special teams coach at Ohio State made more than that last year. So you'd, you'd be looking at probably a pay bump, which is not necessarily doesn't necessarily matter for someone like Eddie George. But, yeah, there are plenty of, you know, I, I know Scotty Graham is a running backs coach. Mm -hmm. He just jumped from a former Ohio State running back, uh, jumped from Arizona to Washington this cycle. I know Pepe Pearson was on Eddie George's staff at one point at Tennessee State. I don't think he's there anymore. But, you know, there, there are a lot of interesting names. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie, you know, the jump from a head coaching position to a position coach position, this has happened. This is this is something that is sort of almost a trend in some ways. And if you were, have been at a place for a couple of years like Eddie George has and have not had immediate success and, you know, maybe maybe the clock is ticking there. I have, you know, I'm not going to pretend to have great sources on Tennessee State football and the uh, the views on the coaching staff there at this point. But you know, if you feel like you've been somewhere a couple of years and the hill's a little steeper than you might have thought, yeah. go go reset that clock and go be the running backs coach somewhere. He would certainly be a name on the recruiting trail. I know this is an easy trap to fall into to just say, well, go get the you know famous former player who played this position at your school. Sometimes that works. You know, sometimes that's Tim Walton and Brian Hartline, and sometimes it's not. And it, you know, that it's not as automatic, Kevin. It's that that's not an automatic success. Sometimes it's a home run. Sometimes it's not. You know, Eddie George at least has the history in coaching that would make you think he's interested enough in this that he's made it made it something of a post playing career. So, you know, maybe he's a better fit there than the average bear. Well, and the thing to remember too is you have a couple of positions on your staff that are your designated recruiters, and running back coach is one of those positions. So having somebody who is as charismatic as Eddie. And I mean, let's let's remember this, that a bunch of us, you know, 40 and 50 year old dudes, you know, we have our memories of Eddie. The kids he'd be out recruiting would have no idea who the hell he is. OK, Mr. George. OK, Coach George. I don't I I don't you know, we don't have any standard depth footage of you, you know, going for three plus against Illinois or whatever. But, uh, you know, I think Eddie would be my first call and I again I said that on my shows I bounced from one show to the other and I and people are already giving me grief they're like your show's dated I'm like I know but I had to do it <laughs> um we are seeing the trend of coaches moving you know uh, uh, allegedly he's taking a step down at least in terms of responsibilities you know whether or not it, you're Chip Kelly and you're you know, further along in your coaching career and you just want to be happy again or whether or not you're any, because I've, I've seen guys who have gone in and, and done FCS football and then maybe step back into a role in FBS football because do you sometimes get lost, you know, coaching there in the, in the HBCU? Um, maybe. And, you know, I think at some points you have guys too that are like, well, Everything that I've accomplished, I mean, so much of it is because of this place. I want to go there and and step in and do this. So, I I, I think it makes a ton of sense. I, I I never want to sit there and say that oh, this is as close to a can't miss if it were to happen, but it it, it sure feels like it should work. Tom, before we spend twenty minutes on this super chat, I have a suggestion. There is a currently a head coach at UCLA by the name of Deshaun Foster. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> former running back, UCLA running backs coach for years under Chip Kelly. There is precedent of Ohio State going and grabbing UCLA's head coach as a position coach. Uh, we know that Ohio State likes to dabble in the familiar places. I'm just going to say go and get Deshaun Foster. Make him say no. Uh, you know, there's the old bit that Ryan Day has the opportunity to do the funniest possible thing here. And I'm not sure. I, I I had thought all along that the funniest possible thing would be to hire Mike Hart and have Mike Hart win a national championship with Ohio State. Ooh. But Deshaun Foster winning in, a, you know, hiring Deshaun, hiring the second sitting UCLA head coach away in. I mean, that's certainly like the, the flex. That's the power move there. I'm not expecting it, but that is that is certainly the power move. Uh, someone said that Pepe is still at Tennessee State. He's actually at Tarleton State in Texas mm -hmm. now. He's not at Tennessee State. So you know, we go to Tarleton be... State, I believe. Isn't Ross Bjork's oldest going to Tarleton State? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yes, he is. Yes. So if Ross Bjork, uh, if we see the Ohio State private plane fly down to Tarleton, Texas, it can only mean one of two things: college visit or new running backs coach. We will continue to monitor Flight Aware uh, and bring you any breaking updates. What if he uh, takes the Ohio State plane to visit his son? But he, he yeah. makes it look like 
a coaching interview. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I don't know what could possibly go wrong. I can't, I can't wait to start flight tracking position coaches. Like we haven't had a good old fashioned head coaching search in a long time. I, I'm looking forward to a, an Ohio state head coaching search, even a position coaching search in the flight tracking era. I can't wait. Uh, speaking of things I can't wait for Jordan Kapler joins us. Jordan, always so good to see you in the chat. He says, how could Tom do this to us? I don't know which one of you wants to take how, how this is actually my fault. Well, I think one of the reasons Tom could do this to us is because he's a bad person and uh, he enjoys hurting Ohio state fans. I think we all know that he is a, a known hater. He is a, a great, a pessimist and just uh, enjoys, uh, he revels in the misery of Ohio state fans. I think as everybody knows, and that's just one of the, the reasons that Tom did this, Kevin, any other reasons? Tom is Eric Cartman, and Jordan Kapler and Buckeye Nation are um, oh god, oh god, the, the kid. The, I mean, this is I know I had it up there. Tony talked too long or whatever. Scott Tennerman. Todd. Scott, no. Scott Tennerman. Scott Tennerman. Scott mm. Tennerman, and and he is sustained by the tears of Scott Tennerman after. Well, he yes. makes the silly. So so basically, you are worse than Cartman. Wow. Um, Kevin is Kenny. What happens to him? Well, I guess we'll find out later in the episode. Anyway. They, uh, they're not doing that anymore. They ran oh, out oh. of it. That's, yeah. mm. uh, Mello says, thanks for going live. Needed the chat. I was going crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is an interesting, uh, definitely an interesting move here. Um, Eric Montoya says, I'm wondering what Tony Alford was making here at Ohio State because we may be able to pay Eddie more, even though he was the head coach at Tennessee State. I said earlier, I think ten, I saw that Eddie George was making $468,000 at Tennessee State. I don't know if that's the all encompassing number or if there's a, you know, there's sometimes there's a shoe money or media appearances or whatever that bumps the base salary up. So I don't know if that's the base salary or the kind of the all encompassing number, but either way, he's not making a million bucks a year down at, at uh, Tennessee state. Tony, do you know what yeah. Tony Alfred was making last year? $772,000. Mm -hmm. So yeah. and in this, yeah. So this is, this, I, I, this I would, would be a, a bump. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I would expect maybe a bump for Alfred too. He might be a seven figure guy now. As, as a position coach and maybe a, perhaps a co-offensive coordinator. So the interesting part of this, other, other than all the stuff we've already talked about, the interesting part of this is, okay, now you have a guy jumping from Ohio State to Michigan in the middle of spring practice. Ohio State brought on a Michigan walk-on, Joey, Joey Velasquez. Uh, he was a, a, player, a scholarship player at Michigan, walking on as a linebacker at Ohio State. So you have someone kind of going the other way earlier this year. And at the time, I think we all thought, boy, that's, that's an interesting move to make given where this rivalry is and maybe even the most heated time of this rivalry over the last century in what has been a century of very heated rivalry. So now you have a guy going from the coaching staff at one to the coaching staff at the other, you know, just, just to start with, well, he knows what the, the first pieces of the spring, uh, the uh, spring install is, I guess. Uh, Sue says, Michigan boards are saying Alfred is leaving because the NCAA is dropping the hammer on us. OMG, irony is dead. Tony. Uh, Please let the mods be the ones saying this bull crap. Please <laughs> let those mods over there be the ones saying this bull crap. Tony, um, how much of this do you think has to do with private eyes in New Hampshire, Whoa. first of all? Yeah. All I of it or more than that? No, at least 80%. Once, you know, nobody likes to be monitored, and I'm, I'm assuming. The, the New Hampshire private eyes probably monitoring everybody. And so, though I don't know why you would leave for Michigan if you're trying to get away from the monitors of uh, the, the day private detective agency. I think get away from Michigan, then you get away from the private eyes. Move to Michigan, you're just going to be under the private eyes. Private eyes, in the words of an old song, are watching you. Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of the on-field impact this year, I mean, I guess, you know, I, I don't know how much I really think, you know, Tony Alford is going to turn, you know, Michigan's running backs into, uh, you know, nine yards per carry running backs or anything like that. I, I think it's interesting, though, to, to look at, OK, they've started install. They've started, you know, Chip Kelly has brought his playbook in, all that kind of stuff. Tony Alford has seen all of this stuff. I, I'd love to talk to Ross, uh, Ross, not Ross Bjork, Ross Fulton. Mm -hmm. Talk, talk Ross. to Ross Bjork about it as well. Probably have a better chance of having Ross Fulton on the show later this week. But to talk about to talk about you know how much does this matter? How much have they brought in at this point? How much have they shown at this point? Feels like you probably you've been there a while. You've probably sort of 
you know, been, been to the fair and seen the bear, as Kevin likes to say. So, you know, how big an impact does that potentially have that, okay, now you've got a, you, you've spent, you're only two practices in, so you haven't done a whole heck of a lot of install, but you know, how much, how much does that needs to change now, now that you have a guy who's gone to Michigan? Cause Tony, can you imagine, uh, Michigan having uh, inside information about Ohio State football going into an Ohio State Michigan game. Let me jump in quick. Will Ohio State finally change its signals? Will Ohio State finally change its signals? I know we're getting the green dot or whatever, but you're still going to have to have signals. I guess wouldn't this be the case of finally saying, "Hey, maybe we should completely re refresh all of this," and that way, you know, it's 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 off the table. Yeah, I think in fact, no longer don't don't even go with hand signals anymore. Go with leg signals. Just change everything about it. Even change the body parts that you use. Uh, in terms of the, the logistical aspect of this, I, I believe it's Riley Larkin who helps with the running backs. Um, who's the, like the, the the graduate assistant, not necessarily graduate assistant, but a program assistant, and has been with Alfred in practice. So, I guess he becomes the the new position coach maybe uh, until they get this all figured out and boy I, I wonder how quickly they have to move on this just you know it is still still just spring but you you bring in somebody new they're they're learning the offense as the players are um the timing of it is terrible and but you also like you've got a, you've got recruiting going on you've got official visits coming up like you can't just chill and be like well let's just get through spring and then as ryan day says we'll lift up we'll we'll get our heads above water at that point and see what's going on like, you got to get this guy in you've got to get him learning the offense you've got to get him knowing the players you've got to get him knowing the recruits um so this is it, it's never great to lose a coach but this is just really bad timing and then as you said like with the, with the practice aspect of it it's it's completely different and you know the they can still operate, but the new guy, whoever that's going to be, has to come in and I don't know, maybe just run like sixth in the reps as as he's trying to learn everything and just spending a ton of time with with players after practice as well, going over things and um, still better now than August, of course. And, and so, um, but yeah, it's not ideal, and the, just the logistical part creates some issues. Not aside from the Michigan Ohio State thing. Right. Yeah. Mika Hanna wants to know, uh, does Ohio State lose the new signers? So that would be James Peoples and uh, Sam Williams Dixon or Dallin Hayden. I don't I mean, this is not this is not the kind of thing that opens up a 30 day transfer portal window. So this was this would have to happen after spring. That's only a head coach leaving opens up that 30 day instant instant transfer portal window, not a position coach. So this would have to happen after spring. I don't think this impacts any of those guys directly, you know, if, if you lose someone, it's probably not based solely on Tony Alfred is the only human being on earth. I want to play running back for if someone leaves and immediately goes to Michigan. Sure. I will, I will say, okay, that was because of Tony Alfred. I don't really see that happening. I think there's plenty of opportunity. The stuff that, you know, the stuff that brought Sam Williams sticks into Ohio state, I think is not really related to Tony Alfred. So yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, We'll see how that goes, but I'm not anticipating that's a uh, you know that's anything that would is anything to be too imminently worried about. M. Zool says, "Did he get fired, Kevin?" Can I, can I jump in really quick with that? Sure. Uh, with talking about those, um, you obviously as a player don't want to see your position coach move on, but could you sit there and make an argument that you know for Dallin Hayden, this is a chance for him to get in front of a of a position coach who maybe calls his number a little bit more. For whatever reason, he was not getting in in the last couple of years, even though the small glimpses we saw were of a pretty impressive back. And again, that's, you know, I'm not trying to whistle through the graveyard or anything here, but I mean, it's just one way of looking at things. I do also think nowadays players being professional and doing things for money and doing things and making business decisions when we talk to players they talk about this is a business now and when players enter the portal how many times have we heard bu buckeyes this this last past year say they had to, you know mike hall had to do what was best for him 
they understand that the business aspect of things better than they ever have. So a move like this, it's like, well, you know, you got to do what's best for you. So I don't necessarily, I think it takes some of the emotion out of it. And if the emotion is out of it, then the desire to leave, like you are still in the same situation you, you thought was best for you. Um, more, you know, obviously you, you come for a coach and that coach leaves, but you're still in that same situation. So uh, the opportunities are still there. Everything you came in terms of bettering yourself is still there. Um, so I, I don't, and, and if they lose somebody, they lose somebody, but I, I don't see that happening. Um, and, and like you said, it can't happen until spring anyway. So that's, that's another reason why you got to get somebody in here just to re reforge these relationships or forge the relationships. Yeah. And, you know, in terms of the playing time, you know, not, you know, if Dallin Hayden feels like he's not getting enough playing time, the guy who makes the decision on which running back is playing and when is the running backs coach. Tony Alford talked about that a bunch over the course of uh, his time at Ohio State and had a pretty memorable quote where he kind of whipped his head around when when he, he was asked, you know, how do you keep all these guys happy? And he kind of whipped his head around like, what did you ask me? How did you ask that? You know, and basically said, you know, it's their job to keep me happy. He's the one who's delineating playing time. So if you're not happy with your playing time and you're playing, you know, position coach leaves, that might actually make it more likely you stay at a place rather than leave. Uh, Wingman Ted likes Kevin's new glasses. I always punch up Wingman Ted comments just because he has the classic, classic uh, hungover Rob Gronkowski slash probably not hungover Jeff Swoboda picture. Mm -hmm. from Definitely the, uh, over Jeff Swoboda. Recru recruiting days of your one of my all time favorites. Uh, as far as how relevant Eddie George is, I didn't think about this one. John Moore says the kids see Eddie in the Dr. Pepper Heisman House commercials. I think those are Nissan Heisman com House commercials, yeah. not Dr. Pepper. But uh, was he in uh, Was he in a Dr. Pepper commercial as well? He might have been in one of those Fansville commercials at one point. He he was he did some acting. You yeah, might be Eddie thinking of Scott acting. Baio. I'm, well, that's true. I'm always thinking of Scott Baio. Uh, if I'm not thinking of Buddy Ames, I'm thinking of uh, Scott. Uh, sorry, Willie Ames, who played Buddy Runback. Sorry, little. I was uh, for someone who spends as much of his time thinking about Charles and Charges me. That was a really, really embarrassing Freudian slip. That's my bad. Does sorry, Paul Eggert still have the restraining order against you? <laughs> Again, that's Willie Ames, not Nicole Eger. Uh, you know, so, and this is Wingman Ted. In terms of Hayden, was it Alfred or Day keeping off the field? I think Alfred controlled who went in. Mm -hmm. So I doubt he'd follow someone actively blocking. Maybe Chip Kelly said to play him more. I don't think, you know, Chip Kelly's opinion on Dallin Hayden. I doubt Chip Kelly has a very strong opinion on Dallin Hayden after two practices. But if he does, I doubt, you know, that that's not going to be the driving force behind this kind of decision. I think we we talked off, off the top of the show about the fact that, you know, there was some conversation around Tony Alfred's job security following last season. And also, you know, maybe you're getting more money. Maybe you're getting more say. Maybe it's, you know, we, there, there's a bunch of possible explanations here in terms of the, the true reason why. Yeah, I don't I don't think Dallin Hayden's playing time is going to be the driving factor there. Mike Freno says, funny, funny scenario, UCL is head coach who was a running back coach last year. Deshaun Foster comes to Ohio State to be the running backs coach. I know it's not happening. Yes. Mike Freno on the same wavelength as Tony Gerdeman. It's the meanest thing I've ever said to anyone who has super chatted us. I'm I'm very sorry. I, I meant I should have directed that at Jordan Kapler somehow. I'm sorry. One of us. One of me. One of me. Uh, Mika Hanna does uh, suggest or ask a good question. Is, is this going to screw us? Uh, screw Ohio State over with Marquise Davis and other running backs. And Kevin, this is a year where they're in on like I don't know 13, 20, 25 running backs who are all talented and uh at one point it was looking like they could grab three if they wanted then it was it was like well maybe just one or two or is all they're gonna have room for you gotta hope that all of that all of those fish in the barrel will still be there once everything settles with the running backs coach well bo jackson and marquise davis are still both from ohio so there is something about uh ohio state recruiting them I'll be curious to see where you know Ohio State has gone and gotten South Florida quarterback or uh, running back commits only to lose them to Miami. There's a situation of where they're have, they're highly in on one there too. Do they have a little bit of a philosophical change? I'm most interested in what this means to Jordan Davison, uh, the running back out of out of modern day, who's supposed to be taking a multi-day trip to Columbus. Mark and I, on a recent episode of the Skull Session Recruiting Podcast, both kind of agreed that maybe Ohio State was the leader there. Now, 
Now you got to wonder as Texas has really been pushing there and Texas will be will push its stability. So Ohio State probably needs to make sure that it makes a splash higher. I'll keep track on what is the status of that Davison visit if they if they follow through with it, if they push it back for when Ohio State has somebody in place. How quickly does Ohio State feel like it has to act with you know, us being in spring practice? I mean, and, and getting ready to put everybody out on the road for recruiting. I mean, we're certainly not going to get to the, you know, beyond the spring game without a, a running back coach. But is this something, a, a position that they can fill in the next, I don't know, 17 days before, the, you know, before the end of the month? Yeah, well, and the Jordan Davison visit is currently scheduled for 14 days from now, March 27th through April 1st. So that's a long, that's an extended visit. And, you know, so you would obviously, if you're going to keep him on that schedule, prefer to have someone else in at that point. And with spring ball already being two practices in, I'm sure, you know, you kind of have a list. You always kind of have a list for just about any possible scenario. So I'm, I'm sure that was not something that Ryan Day was necessarily thinking about doing this week, but you know, this is, this is something where they were evaluating all of the coaches at the end of last season. Alfred was one of the coaches they were evaluating. And I, you know, there was at least a conversation that he might not return. He ended up returning, but you know, if you had that conversation, you're probably, you probably have a list in a desk drawer somewhere. And if you were Ohio state, you were kind of at the top of the food chain in terms of bringing in someone else's running back coach at this point in the cycle. So We'll uh, we'll see where they where they end up going with that. Uh, in case you're just joining us, Pete Thamel reporting that this is this is happening. This is not a this is no longer. It started. We started the show with this is uh, being reported, and we think it's going to happen because it would be pretty silly to get to this point and then be like, uh, I might leave for the uh, school's most bitter rival, but I'm not sure yet. So I'll let you know if I'm going to be back tomorrow or not. So we figured this was pretty much a done deal as soon as that report came out. Pete Thamel saying now it is a done deal. Um, the, uh, an interesting question from heat, uh, point here, uh, they have the running game coordinator job to, uh, Justin Fry last year, Ohio state had the worst running game in 20 years. I'm sure that didn't set well with, with Tony Alford. I, I don't know, Tony, how much of that is, you know, Tony Alford was the assistant head coach for the offense. Like sometimes you're just kind of handing out titles and, uh, it allows you to pay guys more to keep guys on staff. So I don't know, you know, d- do you think, do you think Justin Fry got like a special crown or scepter or something, or like a special talking stick for the run for the running back, you know, running game meetings? Or how much how much of that do you think means something? And how much of that is just like, and now we can pay you a hundred thousand dollars more every year? Right. Well, as the running game coordinator, you do hold control of the talking stick. And if you're a position coach and you don't get the talking stick when you've been asking for the talking stick, you will get frustrated. So I would assume the uh one of the the qualifications or the requirements for Tony Alford if he's leaving for Michigan is, Hey, I need, I need a talking stick. So, uh, but no, it's, it's, everybody has their own jobs. Everybody, you, you know, you, you focus on your position, you get that going. Obviously you got to recruit. Well, you've, you have those things and you all contribute. It's all um, communal in terms of the game plan. And, and, you know, Tony Alford has third and shorts and second and shorts and, you know, Justin Fry has first and 10 and things like that. Everybody has their own little things that they work on. And I think everybody has enough to do, you know, the way things are right now. So, um, you know, clamoring for more. I don't know if that's necessarily a thing other than wanting to be higher. You know, I I don't need more as I am, but if you want to bump me up, then I, you know, I will, I'll take it. And it seems like this would be an opportunity for him again, nine years going into his 10th year at the same school. It's rare 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 for an assistant coach to do that and so yeah, this is why you eventually you got to move on to move up uh odysseus says the trey uh henderson injuries had a lot to do with the running game issues and you know the fact that when he has been healthy he has looked like travion henderson when he has not been healthy the running game has not been quite as good the offensive line last year was also not necessarily up to the standards of a typical ohio state offensive line that goes into it as well they didn't have a quarterback who used his legs that is going to be a little different this year as well. That gives you more options in terms of the running game. So yeah, I, I think last year's running game is probably only going to bear a very slight resemblance to this year's running game for all of those reasons before we even get into the Chip Kelly impact there. Uh, Mello number seven says, Maurice Claret just tagged Ryan Day saying, do you have room for me on your staff? I know you have love for me, LOL. Uh, Kevin, my assumption is if they do go former Buckeye with the running game, you know, with the running back position coach, you're more likely to look at someone like Scotty Graham or Pepe Pearson or 
you know, Eddie George, I would probably have at the top of that list if he's available, as you guys have both talked about before, you know, rather than someone who is not in the coaching game. And, you know, this is, you, you don't generally go from not in the college football coaching game to immediate 10 man, you know, 10 man, uh, 10 major assistant kind of position. Well, MC 13 certainly was a vocal critic last year of certain issues. And then, you know, I'm, I'm only getting this from, from Claret's side, from what he puts out on social media, Ryan Day wasn't certainly addressing this. I guess there was a, a conversation and he got on board. So I know that the, the love for me is kind of, kind of comes from there, but, uh, you know, I think I think Mo is doing really great work being an inspirational speaker and working with it sounds like he's doing some stuff with that risk youth. Um, I think that's probably where he's going to stay at this point. And as Tom had said, there are probably some other names out there that you can still get a former Buckeye running back who also has some experience coaching because even Brian Hartline, who everybody, you know, loves as recruiting and what you know the development is he didn't walk right into the 10-man rotation i mean he had to sit there and he had to earn his stripes in a in a support role so you know when you just sit there and start grasping at straws or thinking oh i'm going to make the biggest splash higher in terms of name and there's you know there's not really any experience or proof of results to to base that off of that's where you get yourself in trouble can i vote for the brother of a former ohio state running backs coach uh, Jim Trestle. Mm, mm, yeah, the Dick Trestle, of course. Jim Trestle's brother was the former was the former Ohio State running backs coach in the what early to mid two thousands. So, I, I think Jim Trestle may be uh, a little overqualified at this point, and also a little bit retired. Which uh, it. It, it makes save it. <laughs> you know, listen, his his history is on the defensive side of the ball. However, he does have ties to the state of Ohio, so you you can never say never. Uh, Wingman has says my vote. My rather rather famously, although it sounds like he's uh, not that interested in recruiting anymore. What with the kids today, and their baggy jeans and their yada yada yada, according to what he said in front of Congress yesterday. We'll move on from that. Uh, Wingman Ted says his vote would be for beating Wells, who I believe is also not doing coaching stuff right now. So, yeah, I, I think you're you're looking for you're generally not bringing someone in from completely outside the coaching business uh, to have him jump right back in to be, you know, Brian Hartline came on staff and was getting coffee for a while and then James moved Lorenitis. up slowly. And James Lauren had the same thing. Yeah. Years as a GA. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, did you guys uh, happen to see the Denzel Burke tweet that just went out, which was a quote tweet of a report about uh, Tony Alfred leaving and it just has five thumbs down emojis. Yeah. So well, we always talk about that's... how Denzel Burke is the arbiter of truth and he always tells it how it is. That is how he is feeling right now. You and Tony, we have done the interpret what Denzel Burke says or interpret what someone else had a good like it was oh, it was a Jim Knowles quote. And it was like, well, what do you think he meant by that? And it was like, you could interpret this five ways. So is that uh, thumbs down that they're losing Tony Alfred? Is that thumbs down that someone from that building could dare to go jump to to Michigan? I, I, I'm open to anyone's interpretation on that. The latter. Maybe Tony just wants to be the only coach there that doesn't have a show cause against him. Uh, Christopher Esty says, could this have anything to do with how recruiting is going for the 2025 recruits and beyond? I mean, Kevin, you have talked about running back recruiting quite a bit. This this feels like a cycle where Ohio State's in actually pretty decent shape on the running back recruiting trail. Yeah, Ohio State's not struggling with its running back recruiting. I think Ohio State could fill itself up right now at running back if it wanted to, if it really you know applied pressure and made that happen. But when you are after so many different backs and and obviously Jordan Davison who we talked about a little earlier is kind of the the back that I think that they've really targeted as you know a priority get we're only in mid March I don't think that anybody's necessarily looking at their recruiting board at least in a major program and going oh my god we are just absolutely hosed at this position or that position of of what things are 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 shaping up for um so no i don't think that the i don't i don't think there's a situation of that i don't i mean how how is he going to go to michigan and start recruiting there in terms of what's going on i mean obviously they had like quorum last year i mean he had a very nice year donovan edwards 
was largely absent until he wasn't. Um, but you know, they're having to rebuild their offensive line. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that is that is going on there. I'll be interested to see how he starts walking into some of these homes wearing a uh, you know a, a secondhand maize and blue jacket until they can get his wardrobe in and and say, well, remember all those things that I said before? Well, scratch that. I'm, I'm I've got a completely different message for you, and boy, are you gonna like it. Uh, well, it, can it, I just jump in real quick? Mm -hmm. uh, I just got confirmation from Ohio State that Tony Alford is no longer with with uh, with Ohio State. So Ohio State is now confirming that. All right. So there you go. Officially, Tony Alford no longer at Ohio State, headed to Michigan. Mike Freno says, that Alford know the, now the only offensive coach on Michigan staff who was coached at another P5 school. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, while well, Tony furiously Googles to save us from uh, – not remembering where Michigan coaches have coached, uh, we can uh, we can keep moving along through the uh, through the the uh, other comments. Uh, David Chapman says probably Chip Kelly wants control over the running game. I don't. I mean, Kevin, I don't think that Chip Kelly. There was any question who was going to have control over the running game. One of them was the offensive coordinator, and one of them was, was the running backs coach. This is not one of those who you know who outranks the other one. That that's pretty. It was pretty clear as soon as Chip Kelly came on board that this was going to be Chip Kelly having a lot more say over the running game than anyone other than maybe Ryan Day. I'm FBI. I'm in charge. Not anymore. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, it, I mean, coaching the offense is kind of a group thing. I mean, obviously Chip Kelly is coming in to run the Ohio state offense. I don't know if it got into a turf war or, an elbow measuring contest or anything else, whatever body part you want to use there. No, Tony, don't worry. I'm not going to take this. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, we heard about when, when Jim Knowles came in and he's going to be in charge of the defense and hiring and firing decisions and everything else. And well, we didn't necessarily see all of that. I'm, I'm going to be really interested to see if, if there was a philosophical difference in terms of how Chip saw things and Tony saw things or whatever. But again, I don't think that Tony is necessarily doing a ton of, of, of the play calling. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I still have not had a chance to sit down and really think all of this through. I mean, this is, you know, this is, I started the day noticing that Trev Alberts was going to Texas A&M to be the AD there. And I'm like, wow, wow. There's, there's the topic of the day. And then 20 minutes later, nobody's talking about that anymore, unless you're in Lincoln or college station. Do, What's do interesting wanna, is, yeah, go ahead. I was saying, do we want, do we want to touch back on the, uh, the Sharon Moore coaching staff on offense? Mm -hmm. Let's, let's do it. So Kirk Campbell, who is the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach, has been at Michigan since 2022 when he was an offensive analyst. Before that, he was at Old Dominion, and then uh, he spent three years at Penn State as an offensive analyst before he was, um, yeah, he's, he's been at really small schools. Uh, Steve Casula, who is their tight ends coach, was at UMass as OC and QBs in 2022 and 2023, was an analyst at Michigan in 2019 through 2021. And before that, some small schools, Colgate, Davenport, Ferris State, a uh, stint at Western Michigan. Grant Newsom at uh, the offensive line coach at Michigan, the former Michigan offensive lineman who was a student assistant, then a graduate assistant, and then he was uh, the tight ends coach in, at Michigan and uh, last year and the year before that, and is now the offensive line coach. Ron Bellamy is the receivers coach who um, was a head coach at West Bloomfield High for a decade before becoming the safeties coach at Michigan in 2021 and then receivers in 2022 and 2023, and uh, now the offensive uh, passing game coordinator. So, yeah, not a lot of uh, experience outside the realm of Michigan or certainly no other Power 5 coaching experience. So this right away, like he, uh, Tony Alfred moves right up the ladder, and I would be at this point pretty shocked if he is not co-offensive coordinator, run game coordinator, all of that, and – and Michigan has some money to play with now in terms of their coaching staff. So, like I said earlier, I wouldn't be shocked if, uh, you know, he, he's seven figures. I, plus, plus the political aspect of it, just the it looks like a, another win for Michigan over Ohio State, that kind of, you know, kick to the gut that uh, I think would make uh, Michigan feel pretty good about their program right now. 
You mean propaganda? Uh, John Moore wants to know, was Tony's uh, Alfred's contract extension ever announced? And Tony, you were looking at this before we started recording. And I, I think the answer is no, because his wasn't his deal up after last year and he's coming back. But I don't think there was ever anything official on that. Right. Right. A, a year ago, we got our um, every year, every outlet sends a FOIA request, request, Freedom of Information Act request on the coaching contracts. You send it uh, after the season. And we got last year's on March, I think, 16th. And that was um, – so we're, we're a few days out from getting this year's. So I'm going to assume it was just a, a one-year deal. But, you know, obviously he was extended because he was still coaching. So, like – but we never – we I think we would have heard if it was longer than one. Um, we heard some other names that were extended that were longer than one. So um, this was a situation where clearly I'm, – I'm guessing this is probably a three-year deal for Alfred and a uh, ton more security. So you figure he would have made probably 800 this year and without any, any knowledge that he's coming back or like, I'm guessing 3 million for three years, something like that. You know, can you blame the guy guys? Can, can the chat blame a guy for doing that? Uh, just scrolling through the chat. The answer appears to be yes, they can blame him. <laughs> I, this is going to be such a fascinating year. This is, well, first of all, this is the last time Ohio State brought a couple Michigan coaches over. It was mm -hmm. Al Washington and Greg Madison. Greg Madison had uh, pulled off the Midwestern uh, triple coaching at uh, Michigan and then Notre Dame and then back to Michigan and then Ohio State. Tony Alfred went from Notre Dame to Ohio State and now to Michigan. So interesting that two of the guys who've made this jump have also done the Notre Dame stint uh, during their had? careers. Is, is that what? Had? An EGAD, an Emmy, Globe, uh, whatever. A NOM? Or EGAD. I don't know what the hell it's called. Yeah, NOM. A, yeah, there you a go. MON? Yeah. Uh, yeah I think Tom is also suggesting that James Laurinaitis will be headed to Mi Michigan in the near future. I, yeah, rest assured, I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't see that one happening. Uh, I saw someone also at one point asking... Uh, if you know if this Ed meant Warner. that Brian Hartline Brian Hartline was in danger of jumping, I would be very surprised if Brian Hartline jumped anywhere else. I think Brian Hartline's doing just doing just fine uh, at Ohio State right now. Um, okay, here's let's let's address this real quick because of the uh, uh, because of the uh, misconception that I think is being put forth here. Michigan has more money than Ohio State. Look at the endowment has compared to Michigan has compared to Ohio State. That's First of all, you're not spending endowment money on a running backs coach for one thing. Uh, it's athletic department money, I think. I think Ohio State is – it's like Ohio State and Texas, I think, are generally one, two for the biggest athletic department budget every year. Um, and, you know, if you've listened to folks on Michigan message boards, the only thing that has kept Michigan from winning the last 30 national championships is a refusal to spend money. Uh, in areas in football where other people are. So, yeah, probably not. Um, Refusal to spend money and online classes. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Boy, this is going to be so fascinating because, you know, the reception for the whole Michigan team is not going to be great when they show up in Columbus, much as the reception for Ohio State was not real great when they showed up in Ann Arbor last fall. I said earlier, this is, you know, in a century of a very heated rivalry, this is maybe the most heated portion of it where, you know, for years and years and years, it was a, a rivalry built on respect. Uh, both head coaches were asked about that uh, last fall, about, you know, respect for their opponent. And uh, let's just say they demurred uh, in terms of uh, not, you know, not exactly saying no, but sort of like answering a different question, which has really never been the case before what is the reception for Tony Alfred like at Ohio state next year? You know, are, are there uh, big handshakes and hugs at the 50 yard line during pregame warmups next year? I'm not expecting that really. Maybe the players, maybe, 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 maybe uh, after the, the game, maybe the winning, the winning side will seek out the losing side. I don't know what the losing side will really be seeking out the winning side. I, I, I I think everybody knows, even even more so now that it is more of a of a of a business with NIL and everything else. That you know, guys get guys get traded and everything else. But at least if you're traded, 
that may not have been of your own doing or whatever. I mean, leaving for for a job against your rival is is something else. And I don't know how you guys have been doing with your tw- Twitter DMs and text messages, but um, yeah, I I've had to provide a lot of uh, like uh, psych uh, mental health services. We'll just put it that way for people <laughs> because there's been a lot of anger, and I just told everybody to come to the show where Tom could piss you off instead. What what did I do? I didn't do anything. I'm not I'm not making anyone angry. Come on. We're, Kapler. We're, 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 Kapler. We're, Kapler. Well, he doesn't count. He never counts. <laughs> Till next year. Then he'll count again. Right. Then he'll count again. He counted last year, we'll count next year. This year, not so much. That's all right. Well, we're reaching a uh now we have people explaining endowments in the comments. Yeah, we, we get it. You're not using your endowment to pay for running backs coaches, so it's really not relevant to this conversation. Well, Tom, it's either like, hey, do we want to, we could send this to do some cancer research or now hear me out. Give the running backs coach a couple hundred extra thousand dollars. And, you know, you're telling me you're going to take money away. Like you're, you're not going to do that, Tom. This is football we're talking about. It sure is. And uh, now it's football. We're going to be talking about in the past tense. We've been down here for an hour. I think we've kind of addressed all of the, uh, addressed all of the big topics here. I'm going to guess this will not be the last time we discuss this and or a bunch of other stuff uh, related to Michigan football this year on uh, the Buckeye Huddle YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. Make sure you hit that thumbs up if you're watching us live right now or if you're watching us later. Leave us a comment if you have other other stuff you want us to talk about on some of these shows. We're going to be talking about a bunch of it. Uh, have one more super chat just to get in here. Under the wire, Will Zerk says, that's like a coach going from Deffy Dogs to the Nap Cats. Shameful. Tony? Um. Uh, I think maybe from the Defiance Bulldogs to the Napoleon Wildcats. Okay. All Northwest right. Ohio stuff. I figured uh, it was an NWO reference, and I'm not talking the cool <laughs> one. I'm talking about the other one. Although ones. I will say this is very reminiscent of NWO as Tony Alford playing the role of Hulk Hogan, turning his back on America to uh, become a bad guy. Per Ohio State. Hogan. The Michigan Michigan players will be taking their vitamins and saying their prayers, and then uh, they will come down to Columbus in uh, 200 and hang on 261 days as of the date of this podcast. Ohio State will be facing former Ohio State coach Tony Alford and the Michigan Wolverines. Finally, something to be interested about about this year's Ohio State Michigan game. I was so worried it was going to be like, what are we going to talk about for 261 days? Oh, friends, there's always something. When will the Michigan notice of allegations come out? Well, that's supposedly coming soon-ish. We'll see how serious that ends up being. Ohio State spring practice resumes next week with maybe not a running back coach for a while, and then maybe a new running back coach shortly after that. Michigan spring practice going on. Michigan spring game one week after Ohio State spring game. That's on April 20th, so plenty to watch there as well. We're going to be talking about all of it at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That's where Tony, Kevin, and I cover the team. Mark covers recruiting. We had our whole team of X's and O's gurus making you a smarter football fan. All at BuckeyeHuddle.com. If you'd like to support us and the work we do, that's a membership there is a great way to do it. We hope to see you there on the Huddle Board presented by Jeff Ruby Steakhouse. That's where we talk about all sorts of stuff we can't always talk about on YouTube. Good inside information. All there at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Thank you guys all for joining us for this very special live edition that we did not necessarily expect to do when we got up this morning. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.